Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the University of Kansas Health System's Stroke Education Speaker Series put on for the American Stroke Foundation. My name is Sarah Langston, and I'm Stroke Outreach Coordinator for the Health System. Um, during our Zoom meeting, your microphone will be muted, and I'll be going through and making sure that everyone's muted, but feel free to unmute yourself to ask a question or to use the chat button at the bottom of your screen for questions. Today, we're excited to have one of our rehab physiatrists, Dr. Sarah Eichmeyer, with us. She's going to be presenting on left versus right-sided stroke symptoms. Um, so, Dr. Eichmeyer, take it away. All right, wonderful. So, hopefully it's not me making that weird sound. <laughs> um, let me just start my slides here. Um, so, I, I think I've met a lot of you at previous American Stroke Foundation talks. So, this is kind of different, right? Everything's different this year being virtual. Um, Sarah had, had requested a talk about left and right sided stroke syndromes and so I, I will hope to do that for you guys today. Um, I'll kind of get through my slides and then there should be plenty of time at the end for questions. Um, so you can use the chat function to, to put the questions out or we can also just save them for the end too. Um, my hope today was to go over um, just some common left sided stroke symptoms and some common right sided stroke syndromes but really to understand that every stroke is different um, and I can't possibly cover all the possible things that could happen because every stroke is different. Um, but we'll kind of cover some of the basics. Um, we have to talk a little bit about brain anatomy. So if you've never learned about brain anatomy, this is your chance. Um, we're gonna go over just a couple basic things to understand. I don't know if I can make that smaller. I'll just kind of move it. All right, there we go. It's on the bottom now. Um, so the, the brain is made out of four main lobes, um, and that is the frontal lobe, which sits out here in the front, the parietal lobe, which sits up here kind of in the middle on top, the occipital lobe, which is in the back, and then the temporal lobe, which is on the side. Um, and the way the brain is structured is that each lobe kind of has a couple main jobs that it does. Um, and it's helpful to know what the, the lobes of the brain do because then you can also understand what happens when you have a stroke that affects that area. So the frontal lobe um, does a lot of what we call executive function. So it does a lot of thinking, memory, it's where your personality lives. Um, it has a lot to do with kind of being appropriate in um, and having good manners and kind of doing the things that you learned when you were a little kid and, and making sure you control your behaviors. Um, the parietal lobe, which is kind of up here in the middle, um, that is kind of an, a lobe that we think of as far as like integration. So it takes in the things that you're thinking in the frontal lobe and the things that you're seeing back here in the occipital lobe and the things that you're hearing out here in the temporal lobe and it puts it all together. And so it kind of integrates things in space. So it puts together um, all of those sensory inputs. Um, it's also where you feel things and where you have a little bit of control of your movement. The occipital lobe is in the back and this is mostly just vision. There are a whole bunch of pathways that go in and out of this occipital lobe, but a lot of them control vision and how you interpret what you see. Um, and there are some connections that go from here all the way up to your eyes up front. The temporal lobe on the outside has a main function of hearing. Um, it's very closely connected to your ears. Um, it also has a big function when it comes to language. And so understanding language, comprehending language, producing language. Um, so it's a lot of hearing and language function. At the bottom of your brain, there is this thing called the cerebellum. Um, and it's, this is a big coordination center. Um, where kind of it, it makes your movement smooth and coordinated. Um, and then the brain stem is at the bottom and there's a lot of uh, functions down there. All the areas of the brain up here have tracks that go down into your spinal cord and they go into your spinal cord through the brain stem. And then there's also a whole bunch of cranial nerves down there too. So sometimes you get a cranial nerve issue um, after a stroke and those are a lot of the control movements of your face. Um, and that's kind of where those live. So this is another picture because of course, on top of the lobes of the brain, there are arteries, um, vasculature that bring blood to your brain, which is extremely important. 
Um, this is a picture of the brain, and so this is actually flipped from the last picture. This is the front of the brain and the back of the brain. There are three big arteries that supply blood to the brain. Um, one of them is called the middle cerebral artery, and that's this big one kind of here on the, the outside, the lateral side of the brain. Um, there is the anterior cerebral artery, which is in the front and kind of on the inside of the brain between the lobes. And then there's the posterior cerebral artery in the back that mostly supplies blood to the occipital lobe in the back. Um, and you might have heard these words before because it's pretty common cause of a stroke is for one of these arteries to get blocked off and blood supply is reduced to the brain and that's what causes the stroke. Um, and so we spend a lot of time understanding where these vessels come from and where they go to and what areas of the brain are supplied. This is another picture of the vasculature in the brain. And this is kind of looking on the inside of the brain. So if you kind of would split the brain in half and look on the inside, that's what you see here. And so you see a little piece of that middle cerebral artery, but from here it would go outside and supply the outside of the brain. Um, you see a little bit of the posterior cerebral artery, and this kind of comes up and does the back, but you mostly get a really good picture of the anterior cerebral artery and that's the one that's in the front of the brain and kind of comes on the inside. So those are the three main arteries. This is another picture of what those arteries um, supply in kind of their territory. Um, and so the, the blue color on the screen shows you what areas of the brain are supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. So it is kind of the top and the front, the inside of the brain, and you can also see this in another picture kind of looking down on the brain where it's really that front and the in the middle. Um, the orange area is the middle cerebral artery territory. And so this is a picture of how much of the middle cerebral artery territory is on the kind of the outside or the sides of the brain. And you can kind of see this again if you look down from like looking down onto the brain. It's really kind of those lateral lobes. So temporal, a little bit of parietal as well. And then the posterior cerebral artery territory is yellow. Um, and so really that is mostly the occipital lobe, but a little bit of the, the inferior temporal lobe. And you can see here from the inside of the brain, it's mostly the occipital lobe. And then if you're looking again down on top of the brain, it's kind of like the middle back of the brain. So if you kind of think about um, when you have a stroke in one of these major arteries, the areas of the brain, the lobes that are affected is usually what you end up seeing as far as the stroke symptoms. So this is a picture that shows you a little bit more about what those areas of the brain do and where are some pretty key structures that control what we do. So the frontal lobe, again, this is the front, this is the back. So the frontal lobe up here, um, like I talked about, has a lot of executive function, memory, um, behavior, personality. And then right kind of between, at the back of the frontal lobe, there is a special area called the motor cortex. And the motor cortex is where all the movement of your body originates. Um, and you can see even here, it's labeled because it actually is organized in a way similar to how your body is organized, where your knees and your hips and your trunk are kind of tucked up up here, kind of going inside the middle of the brain and then your hand and your finger and your thumb area comes next, and then your face and your tongue and your swallowing muscles are kind of last. So it's really cool. It's organized like kind of how your body is organized, and that's called the motor cortex. In front of the motor cortex is this area called premotor area, and we call that, we, we think that that area helps with like motor planning, um, and so sometimes, um, even if you're able to do a movement, it's hard to plan the movement. And we think that comes from a premotor area lesion. A little bit below the motor cortex and in front of it is an area called Broca's area. Broca's area is where we do a lot of production of speech. And so this is where the ability to form the words and say the words comes from. And it's located right next to the motor area for the jaw, the tongue, and the pharynx. So moving the jaw, the tongue, and the pharynx and having the language come out um, is coordinated in this area. You might be familiar with the term Broca's aphasia, and some of you may have Broca's aphasia. 
and the, that, that term comes from a stroke in this area causes aphasia or difficulty with producing language. In the temporal lobe, which is on the outside lateral part of the brain, you can see that there's a primary auditory co cortex, which is where you hear and you interpret what you hear. And then just behind that in the temporal lobe is another language area called Wernicke's area. This area is really helps us interpret um, not what we hear and kind of interpret it in our brains. And so you probably have heard of another type of aphasia called Wernicke's aphasia. And that type of aphasia is just very hard to understand what you're hearing. So the words come out and they might not make a lot of sense because what you're hearing doesn't actually make a lot of sense. Um, and so those are pretty important areas for aphasia. The back of the brain is occipital lobe. We talked about that's mostly vision. And then the parietal lobe, like I talked about, kind of brings together what you hear, I'm sorry, what you hear in your language, what you feel along your body, and what you see. And it kind of brings all those things together in space and helps you interpret what you're, what you're experiencing. This is just one more picture of the brain. Um, this is kind of a coronal view, so the brain is kind of cut up and down. Um, you can kind of imagine like, uh, it's like me right now, like you're looking at a picture of my brain kind of from the front to the back. And I wanted to show this picture just to show again that the motor cortex is really arranged kind of like our bodies are arranged where the face is here, um, the hand and the wrist of the elbows are here, the trunk is kind of up here, and then tucked down into that central sulcus is the hip, the knee, the ankle, and the toe. Um, and so one important, important thing to talk about with stroke syndromes is when you have an air, a stroke that affects this middle area, your leg is probably going to be a lot weaker. But if you have a stroke that affects this outside area, your arm and your face might be a lot weaker. All right, and then this is a picture of a coronal, so looking down onto the brain from the top down. And it's just showing you, again, Broca's area, which is where you produce speech and Wernicke's area, which is where you understand speech, and showing you that there are connections in between those areas. So any stroke in this area can cause a different type of aphasia. And then back here, this is the occipital lobe. Remember, this is where you interpret what you see. And this is showing you the connection, um, one of the connections from what you see to the, the central area of the brain, which is the thalamus that coordinates a lot of what you feel. So there's these tracks all over our brain that connect different areas. And so depending on where your stroke was, it can really um, affect not just um, how you can move things, but how those things are coordinated with other senses in your body. So this is a little, uh, pretty simple diagram of the left brain function versus the right brain function, because of course the sides of the brain are not exactly the same. Um, in general, we attribute the left brain to a little bit more of like logical thinking and analysis, sequencing, linear thought, math. Um, I kind of showed you where the main language areas are. Those are mostly on the left side of the brain for most people. Um, so this is a very kind of analytical side of the brain. Um, and a lot of that has to do with how the front of your brain, the frontal lobe works, and then how those um, language centers are interpreted over in the temporal lobe. The right brain on the other side, in general, for most people, is kind of the area of creativity, imagination, um, intuition, a lot of music and art function is probably housed on the right side of most people's brain. Um, and, and so it's a lot of kind of more the emotional side of how we think and feel. Um, and this is not true of everybody. This is for people, most people in the world who are right-handed. Um, this is how your brain is organized. If you are left-handed like me, it's probably flipped, um, or it's possible that there's tons and tons of overlap between how your left and your right, right brain work. Um, it's thought that left-handed people actually probably have a lot more connections between the left and right side of their brain. Um, and so these functions might be actually a little bit more blurred. Um, so this left brain and right brain stuff is for, for the majority of people in the world who are right-handed. This is another picture and I thought it was kind of funny because the sides of the brain are beating up on each other. 
Um, but it shows you a little bit more on left brain versus right brain. So in general, one other function we didn't talk about is olfaction, which is smelling. So that's actually um, in the very, very, very front part of your brain on both sides. But that frontal lobe, which again is like executive function, on the left side of the brain is probably more analytical thought. On the right side is probably more intuition and feeling. Um, the motor area on the left side of your brain controls what your right hand does. So the fibers cross down in the brainstem. And so the opposite is true. The motor area on the right side of your brain controls what your left side of your body does. And so it's opposite. Um, down here in the temporal lobe, it's language for the most part on the left side of the brain, and then science and math. Um, but probably more on the right side is more imagination and music and art and things like that. And then of course in the back in the occipital lobe, it's vision, but again it crosses. So your left side of your brain controls what you see on the right side of the world. And the left, the right hemisphere part of your brain controls what you see on the left side of the world. So everything kind of crosses. All right, so that was a whirlwind tour of brain anatomy, but hopefully it sets you up for what comes next, which is just kind of going over what happens when you have a, a stroke in different parts of your brain. So I'm kind of breaking it up into those major vascular territories so that if you had an ACA stroke, an MCA stroke, or a PCA stroke, we're gonna compare and contrast the left versus the right side. Um, and that's what we'll kind of do for the next couple slides. So we're gonna start with the left ACA stroke. So a left ACA stroke, so remember the ACA is kind of the middle of your, middle of your brain and the front of your brain. Um, and so what you're gonna see with a left-sided ACA stroke is right-sided weakness. Because it's kind of in the middle, remember on the motor strip, that's where your leg is kind of tucked in. So your leg will probably be weaker than your arm. You'll probably have some numbness on that right side and maybe even pain, like nerve pain. Um, you might have some apraxia. Um, apraxia is kind of a coordination of movement or speech. And what it means is that you might have the ability to move your arm and leg, but you just can't get that motor plan down. And so it's hard to actually produce that movement um, regularly. You can have the same thing with speech, where you, you, you know what you want to say, you're hearing the right words, but your mouth won't actually do the make the words come out. So we call that apraxia. Um, if you have cognitive deficits, and not everybody does, but if you do for a left-sided stroke, it would probably be more of that logistical thought. So memory, uh, being able to remember to take your medication and oversee your finances. So kind of very like logical thinking might not be as automatic as it used to be. If you move back a little bit um, and talk about the MCA stroke on the left side, um, these strokes can be pretty severe. It's a really big area of the brain that is covered. So it's part of the front, the middle, the back, the side. This is all MCA stroke territory. So if you have a left-sided MCA stroke, you might have right-sided weakness. Because it's a little bit on the outside of that motor area, your arm will probably be worse than your leg, but sometimes both are affected with an MCA stroke. You'll probably have right-sided numbness or pain. You might actually have a visual field cut because that connection from what you see to what you feel is in the, at the MCA territory. And so you might actually lose that connection to the seeing the right side of the world. You also can get apraxia in a left MCA stroke. So even if you have the ability to move, it's hard to get that movement to, to be planned and coordinated. And then if you're on the left side of your brain, you could have aphasia and it could be Broca's or Wernicke's or both, depending on how big the stroke was. So that's a typical left MCA stroke. Now we move back to the left PCA, which member is mostly occipital lobe. So luckily these strokes don't typically have a lot of major deficits. It kind of depends how big the stroke was and if it did affect other areas of the brain. But if it's really just limited to the, the occipital lobe, you might just have some right-sided visual deficits or some difficulties reading or kind of interpreting what you're seeing. Now this is not true of all. Sometimes people have PCA strokes and they end up with weakness, hemiplegia as well. Um, so that would just be like a bigger stroke that kind of moved forward into that motor area. So we'll kind of compare and contrast the left-sided strokes with the right-sided strokes. They're very similar, but there's a couple key differences. 
So we'll start in the front again with the front of the brain, the right ACA stroke. So again, because of the area of the brain that's affected, so kind of that front middle part, um, you'll have left-sided weakness. And again, it'll be more of the leg than the arm. Um, you'll have left-sided numbness or pain. You could also have apraxia. Apraxia is just kind of, for a lot of cortical strokes, kind of a, a, a residual deficit. And then you might also have cognitive deficits, but these are a little different than if it was on the left side. So on the right, again, the right is more intuition, creative thinking. Um, and so really, if you have a right-sided ACA stroke, usually it's more like attention that is affected or safety or insight to your deficits. Um, and so you may not have the insight to understand how weak you are or how unsafe you actually are. Um, sometimes it takes your doctors or your therapists or your family telling you like, hey, like, let's take it easy. I actually don't think you're able to do that right now. Um, and with time, that, that insight and attention typically comes back, but um, usually acutely, it's kind of a, uh, can be an issue. So if we move back a little bit on the right side of the brain to the right MCA stroke, so again, this is, can be a pretty severe stroke depending on how much of that territory it got, but a right-sided MCA stroke should cause left-sided weakness, the arm more than the leg, um, can be numbness and pain on that left side of the body. And again, because it could get those visual optic radiations to the occipital lobe, you could have a pretty big left-sided field cut. Um, apraxia as well, just kind of difficulty performing the tasks. And then with the right MCA stroke, the cognitive deficits, um, there's just a lot of things that can happen um, because the right side of the brain is so important for, again, intuition, creativity, how we think, how we feel, how we integrate what the world is around us. And so right MCA strokes can also have these additional symptoms. You could have what we call left-sided inattention or neglect, where you kind of just ignore the left side of the world, not really thinking about it. You might not even pay attention to the left side of your body or see things in that area of the room. You might also have that reduced insight into deficits um, and maybe even some visual perceptual deficits. But it's really hard for you to interpret what you see with what you feel. And that can turn into some really strange syndromes where you see things that actually aren't really there. And that's just how your brain is interpreting what's going on. You could also get a syndrome where you have reduced inflection in speech. Um, and so when we talk, we talk high, we talk low, and we, we, we switch up the inflection. There's a syndrome in the right MCA called a prosody of speech where people talk very monotone and they don't really hear it, but their family members notice it for sure. Um, and you need some speech therapy to kind of retrain the inflections and the ups and downs in speech. Um, this area of the brain is, is classic also for pseudo, pseudobulbar affect. Um, where uh, you can't really control your emotions and you kind of get some, some big swings where you're crying one minute and you're not really sure why and then you're laughing the next minute and it seems inappropriate and it feels a little out of control. Um, and that also can come with this stroke syndrome. And then we have the right PCA stroke. So again, if it really is limited to the occipital lobe, it might just be um, visual changes or difficulty reading. But it kind of depends, again, if it's a bigger um, cortical stroke, it could affect maybe like some sensation or some coordination too. So that's kind of a whirlwind overview of left versus right. But I think the big message is every stroke is different. And I think you guys know that from talking to each other and sharing your experiences. Um, a couple of things to remember is if you're left-handed like me, you could have the totally opposite stroke syndrome from everybody else because your brain is switched around. If you had a brainstem stroke, that's a whole nother talk and I'm happy to give it to you guys sometimes, but brainstem strokes are very, very different and a whole slew of different symptoms you can have. If you had a minor stroke, you might have some of these symptoms, but it just might be a lot less than kind of what I've described today. And then if you had a really major stroke, it might be more, right? It might be that it's not just your arm or your leg that's weak, it's both. Um, or it's not just your understanding language or your speaking of language, it's both. Um, and so everybody's a little bit different. 
So basically the message is your doctor can review your imaging with you, even if it's been years since you've had your stroke, if they can find your old MRI, they can kind of point out on your MRI where your stroke was. And sometimes that's really helpful to understand what's going on in your body, just so you have a good understanding and your family might have questions about why you are the way you are. Um, it can be really helpful to look back at your MRI and kind of say, well, this is where my stroke was and this is me. Um, and that's great because I think it's good to know what's going on. So that's kind of my summary is that, you know, left-sided strokes um, can affect language typically and then the right side of your body. Um, right-sided strokes can affect attention, insight, safety, and then the left side of your body. Um, but really both sides could affect vision, both can affect swallow. We didn't really talk about swallow today, but both sides can affect that. Um, and cognition. Um, it kind of just, it depends a little bit about where your stroke is. All right, I am gonna open it up to questions now. I wanted to put up my picture and then um, Dr. Herman is my partner. He just started last year. He trained here in residency and he also sees stroke patients at our rehab clinic. So both of us are available and willing to help. 